Welcome back to Top 5 Scary, I'm your horrifying host, Kyle McWatters, and this week we're looking at some of the real deal. Apparently these movies were based off of, or around, real footage that was found, and then connected back to the film with the story. Terrifying. This makes these clips even more scary. Grab some popcorn, keep the lights on, and let's dive into some of these fact or fictions. Number 5, The Last Broadcast. This 1998 American horror film written, produced, and directed by Stefan Avalos and Lance Wheeler tells the story of a documentary filmmaker named David Lee and his investigation on the fact or fiction murders in which got him convicted in a 1995 case, apparently with the murders of his team one night during an expedition to find the mythic Jersey Devil in the Jersey Pine Barrens. The film is shot mockumentary style and employs the found footage technique. The film is believed to be the first full-length feature film shot and edited entirely on consumer-level digital equipment. And on a budget, too. I love this. I'm all here for it. Main character Lee seeks to discover the truth behind these killings while making his documentary. Four men go to the Pine Barrens, where a psychic leads them to the apparent site. In the hunt, they broadcast a live show simultaneously via TV, internet, and amateur radio. They enter the Barrens, but only one emerges alive, as the others are brutally murdered. The likely suspect would appear to be Stephen. Oof, spooky. Seward, the only suspect, is then charged with the murder of his team. During his murder trial, Lee receives a box containing a damaged videotape reel, which he at first assumes is the tape from the team. With the murders caught on the tape, a blurred image of the real killer is seen and is shocked to discover that the killer is the filmmaker himself, Lee. This is a great one. I really enjoyed this movie. It's low budget, young artists, it's a pretty good storyline too. And number four, Man Bites Dog. Man Bites Dog is a 1992 Belgian violent comedy crime mockumentary written, produced, and directed by Remy Balval, André Bonzal, and Benoit Poulvard. I tried, sorry. Who are also the film's co-editors, cinematographers, and lead actor. The film received the André Cavins Award for the best film by the Belgian Film Critics Association, and since its release, the picture has become a cult classic and received a rare NC-17 rating for its release in the US. Yeah, I'd up that rating to a rated R if it was me. After watching bits and pieces, I can't even say that without getting chills. Look, it's pretty disturbing stuff. Shot in black and white, it's gory, like very gory. Like if Tarantino made a gory snuff film. Yeah, I actually can't even put a clip into this because the found footage parts are way too disturbing. The film follows a crew of filmmakers following a serial killer recording his horrific crimes for a documentary they are producing. At first though, dispassionate observers, they find themselves increasingly caught up in the chaotic and nihilistic violence, eventually becoming accomplices themselves. Ben, a witty, charismatic, and an easily enraged sadistic serial killer, takes the filmmakers and the crew to witness and watch the murders, explaining why, how, and when he chooses his victims. The viewer witnesses this grisly killings and crimes in graphic detail. The camera crew becomes more and more involved with the murders and even help Ben. During filming, two of Ben's crews are killed by Italian mobsters, and Ben and his crew have fun taking turns as they shoot the rival crew members while recording the entire process. Like I said, it's gory. Tons more gruesome killings, and Ben is finally arrested, but then escapes. At this point, someone takes revenge on Ben, and he finds his girlfriend and family all disturbingly murdered in revenge. The camera crew and Ben are all ambushed and shot by the rival mobsters. After the camera falls, it keeps running, and the film ends with the death and of the fleeing of the suspects. Only watch this film if you can stomach disturbing scenes. Trust me, it's pretty visual. Number three, Creep. Creep is a 2014 American found footage psychological horror directed by Patrick Bryce and is filmed as found footage and does the genre well. Bryce portrays a videographer assigned to record an eccentric client insisting on filming numerous videos for his future unborn kid. Creep was inspired by Bryce's experiences on Craigslists. Bryce and lead actor Duplat refined the film's story during filming, which resulted in multiple versions of each scene and several alternate scenarios and endings. Struggling videographer Aaron accepts an assignment to travel to a remote cabin where he meets his client Joseph, who explains he has an inoperable brain tumor and is expected to die before his pregnant wife gives birth. 
With this, he wishes to have Aaron record a video diary for his unborn child, and throughout the videos, Joseph demonstrates behavior that makes Aaron a little uneasy, which leads in Joseph confessing some pretty heinous stuff to him. As an increasingly freaked out Aaron intercepts a phone call from Angela, who's actually Joseph's sister, and warns Aaron to escape, Joseph then attempts to stop Aaron, leading to with Aaron escaping. Then, at home, Aaron starts receiving items in the mail from Joseph, including a recording of Joseph digging a grave. Creepy. A DVD is then sent to Aaron, offering an apology in a public setting, which Joseph then kills him from behind with an axe. Spoiler alert, Joseph, now calling himself Bill, later receives a phone call from his newest target as he places a DVD of Aaron's murder alongside recordings of his past victims. That's scary. Yeah, I saw a play about a gruesome Craigslist ad once. They can get pretty disturbing. The film is widely known as one of Netflix's best found footage genre movies, and there's some great jump scares in there for you. Check it out yourselves. Number two, UFO abduction, the McPherson tape. UFO abduction, also known as the McPherson tapes, is a 1989 American found footage sci-fi horror film written, produced, and directed by Dean Alioto. The film focuses on a family who are being terrorized by extraterrestrials during a birthday celebration. The late 80s and the early 90s were ravished by an overflow of popular paranormal genre movies and TV such as The X-Files and Unsolved Mysteries. The film begins with a brief introduction that proposes the film as legitimate and one of the strongest pieces of evidence for ETs yet. On October 8, 1983, the Van Heese family gathers in Connecticut woods to celebrate five-year-old sister's birthday. One of the brothers uses his handheld camera to record the night's events. The evening passes relatively un eventful as the family celebrates. However, after a small power outage, the brothers walk to the neighbors to investigate and the three eventually come across an extraterrestrial spaceship landed in the woods and are shocked to see three small aliens walking around. Oh my god. Oh my god. Holy sh Holy sh Holy sh <sighs> Yeah, that's 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 creepy. They flee in a panic after the aliens notice them. Yeah, I would too if I saw them just walking around the forest. They return to the house and load shotguns, but are divided on whether they should remain in the house or leave. Classic horror movie move. After a while, they assume the visitors have left, but notice all their watches have stopped. They conclude the party, but are terrified as the aliens attempt to enter the house through the windows and chimney. Eric, one of the brothers, shoots and brings an alien's body inside the place and puts it in the back room. After securing the house once more and turning up the radio to block out the voices, the others finally convince Michael, another brother, to put down his camera and resume their card game. From its position across the room, the recording camera glitches and records what looks like three small grey aliens emerging from the back room. The tape ends as the aliens close in on the family. The film claims that the Van Heese's whereabouts are still unknown and that viewers should contact the producers if they have any information. Look, I'm the guy who wears the tinfoil hats. This is pretty good. I liked it. The footage from the woods, the small creatures, the Project Blue Book warning at the beginning of the film. It's a sci fires Friday night. Great film and short, only an hour. And coming in at the number one spot, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a 2003 American horror film starring Jessica Biel and R. Lee Ermey. Its plot we're probably all familiar with if we've seen the numerous takes on this classic movie. It follows a group of young adults traveling through Texas who encounter Leatherface and his murderous family. A remake of Toby Hooper's 1974 film and the fifth of the franchise. Erin and her boyfriend and friends are on their way to a Leonard Skinner concert in Texas. While driving through Texas, the group picks up a severely traumatized hitchhiker walking in the middle of the road. After they talk with the hitchhiker, she takes her own life with a concealed pistol. The group contacts police where they are led to an old plantation house where Thomas Hewitt is waiting also known as Leatherface. Aaron escapes and heads towards the woods, but Leatherface, armed with his chainsaw, follows each of the concert-driven friends one by one in an all-out slasher gore fest. Yeah, I watched this movie when I was 11 years old. No wonder I can't sleep at night. Aaron escapes into the woods with Leatherface chasing close behind her and her friends, but she eventually injures him and halts the pursuit. Leatherface suddenly appears in the road and slashes the car with his chainsaw, but Aaron manages to escape. Two days later, two investigating officers are killed by Leatherface while doing a crime scene investigation of the Hewitt home, and the narrator states that this case still remains open. Come on back here, follow me. Come on. Uh, 
yeah, that's absolutely terrifying, all right? Seems like this franchise was loosely based around a cannibalistic family in the South and actual evidence, case, and trial of Ed Game. Well, there you have it, folks. Five movies to check out and scare the absolute wits out of you. I grew up watching scary movies every Friday night with my family. You know, family traditions. Some of them watch scary movies. Some of them chase people around the woods with chainsaws. As always, turn the lights on, tuck yourself in tight, and stay spooky, everybody.